Okay, so in this video, we are going to begin using Carnot maps. And we're going to begin by looking at two input Carnot maps and determining how we go about putting information from a truth table into that Carnot map. So the first thing we want to look at um, is our values of our inputs are written in the truth table in a single column. So here I can see all the values of A and here is the values of B. So we have a different input combinations, four different input combinations. In the final column, I have my value of my output X. And in the Carnot map, it's arranged a little differently. So instead of four rows, I have four cells in a box like this. So each cell again corresponds to a different input combination. Um, and we'll see how they go as we go along here. So in the first row in the truth table, when A is zero and B is zero, I can see that X is zero. So on my Carnot map, I'm looking in this row when A is zero. So these are my values of A and my values of B are across the top. And this is where B is zero. So I'm going to write X is zero in the middle of this Carnot map here. Um, so I will clear my screen of the red marks quickly. And now we'll look at the next combination of inputs where A is zero and B is one. So again here, A is zero and B is one. And in this case, I can see that X is one. So now I'm going to write a one in the cell corresponding to that input combination. Again, I will clear off my and we will look at the third input combination where A is one and B is zero. And again, we find that X equals zero in this case. So here's where A is one and B is zero. So I'm in this cell here, X is zero. And our final input combination when A is one and B is one, I can see that X is also one. So in our final cell where A is one and B is one, I write that X is equal to one. So that's how we fill in a two input Carnot map. Next, we'll take a look at how we fill in a three input Carnot map. Okay, so here's our three input Carnot map. You can see I've got A, B, and C now. I have three inputs. And you can see in my truth table, A is still down the left hand side, but now I've put B and C together across the top. Um, sometimes you'll see the Carnot maps where you have the two together down the left and only one across the top, um, but I tend to do it this way. All right, so the first input combination we're looking at is when A, B, and C are all zero. I can also see that X is also zero. So here we have A is zero, B and C are both zero, and you can see my zero right here. Let me clear the screen. And the next input combination we're going to look at is when A and B are both zero and C is one. So A is zero, B is zero, and C is one. So in this case, my zero here goes into this cell here. The third combination of inputs is where A is zero, B is one, C is zero. So A is zero, B is one, that's one of these two, and C is zero. So now we are in this cell here. So we have skipped this cell and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But now my one goes 
into that cell there. Next, we are going to do the final input value when A is zero, when we have B and C both equal to one. So this is this zero here, and this is A is zero, B and C are both equal to one. So that zero gets placed in this cell here. Then we will do our next row input combination. A is one, B is zero, C is zero. So I have one, zero, zero. So this one comes in here. One, zero, one. 1, 0, 1 is here. So my 0 there goes into that cell. Next, I have 1, 1, 0. So 1, 1, 0. I look 1, 1, 0. So that one is coming in here. So again, this one, this cell here comes before this cell here. All right, that's the key thing to remember when we have two inputs combined along one edge of a Carnot map. And finally, I have my 111 one, one input combination, and that is 111, and that goes into this cell here. All right. Now let's talk about the reason why we switched these two columns. So uh, if we look in the truth table, going just looking at my B and C columns here, um, I can see that going from this row here where b and c are both equal to zero to the next row where b is zero and c is one the only thing that changes is my c variable so c is the only thing that's changing here from zero to one but When I go between the next two rows, so now I'm going to look at these two rows here, I'm going to notice that B is changing from 0 to 1, and C is also changing from 0 to 1. So in this case, we have two inputs that are both changing. But if I look at my Carnot map, from this cell to this cell, B remains the same, and only C changes. And then in the next set of cells, here B changes, and C stays the same. And then again, from these final two cells, only C changes in these cells. So by going from one cell to an adjacent cell, we only have one variable that is changing. And what this allows us to do is we can look for groups of cells, which we will use to create simplified circuits. And that will be uh, covered in the next video.